Uh, thank you very much, uh, shipping, Singapore Shipping yeah, Association. Yeah, yeah. To welcome me here. It is a pleasure to be able to share a passion. Thank you, Tang Tang, who introduced me to so many interesting people. Where is Tang Tang? Tang Tang. Thank you, Tang Tang. She introduced me to National Heritage Board, to URA, <coughs> and thank you so much. In fact, I would be very much comfortable to be able to show uh, two or three hundred uh, photos of Indonesian boats at sea, in harbour, in in Singapore, in Indonesia, in uh, seaside, to show photo of uh, sailors in their village, photo of cargo. So I have, let's say, two or three thousand slides of Indonesian herit maritime heritage. which are, of course, available. I would be glad to make a donation to uh, any official organization to save this photo, to scan the photo, and uh, to be sure they are in good shape. And they are all at home in France, but I can bring little by little uh, to Singapore, as I normally come to Singapore twice a year. Now, the subject is uh, so wide and so fascinating, I will not have time to say uh, much about the relation between Indonesia and Singapore. First, uh, long distance network between. This is uh, one example of uh, interesting relation between Singapore and Indonesia. Uh, one outstanding long distance trade was run by uh, Bugis Mandar before World War II. There were other networks much uh, longer before that. But this network was very interesting. Uh, Mandar are part of Bugis uh, from South Sulawesi. Bugis are uh, either Bugis Mandar, Bugis uh, Asli, Bugis Authentic, and Bugis Makassar. They don't speak the same language. So when we say Bugis, that means a different language a different place of origin. Bukis Mandar, they came from, from uh, Majene in South Sulawesi. On the seaside is a Mandar, in, inside there are Toraja. The Mandar sailing boats used to leave the country, their village, small village on this coast, to sail directly and stopping at uh, Selaya to take on water and wood. So they left, they de departed the village and go directly to the Aru Archipelago in a place named Dobo, where they met uh, other Bugis, Madures, and uh, they had their agent. Uh, on board the boat, they had the Bugis Sarong, uh, other products from Sulawesi, from Celebes. And in Dobo, they met their agent, and there was a feeder uh, network to bring uh, tripang, sea cucumber, uh, to bring uh, forest products, sea products, paradise bird, 
crocodile skin, a lot of uh, local products. And Dobo was a big entrepôt for the, western, the eastern part of Indonesia. So the Mandar uh, ship offloaded their product in Dobo, loaded sea product and uh, forest products, headed back to their village where they completed their cargo with a new batch of sarong. Then departed to, uh, Saint, to Malacca before uh, going to Singapore, stopping everywhere to take on provision, firewood on water. And when Singapore was open in uh, 1819, they started uh, trading with Singapore. So they offloaded uh, that. So this is a long, long distance uh, trip. So in Singapore, they offloaded uh, their cargo of sarong, products from the east, and reloaded, uh, reloaded uh, European goods, Chinese goods, uh, cotton. What do I have a list of this? Uh, Articles. They, they, most important, they have they taken uh, the talk thread to make sarong at home. European clothes, firearm, gunpowder, tin, tin, iron, China silk, Indian textile, and uh, opium, camphor, earthenware, and ammunition. And then, they, with a prevailing wind, they departed again from Singapore, headed back to their village. The trip was to talk about a year, and they restarted uh, the network with a prevailing wind. So this is one example of a long, long distance trade as there were other distance, uh, long distance trade with the Philippines, with Australia, maybe to Thailand, run by uh, Bugis Bandar, Bugis Makassar, Bugis from Bugis, authentic are from uh, Pare Pare and Bonne, this part. Here they speak Mandar, here they speak Bugis, here they speak Makassar. And here they speak Bugis again. They, have own, they, they all have their own uh, type of boat. And we can also mention the Madures from Madura, who are also very good sellers. And you could see a lot of Madures boats in Singapore after World War II. During the war, uh, Bugis said they have uh, sailed sometimes with the Japanese on board, so they, was, they were very restricted in their uh, trade. But they, from time to time, arrived in Singapore. After the war, they started coming again, uh, especially in 1949, 1950, 1953. And uh, this is when they arrive in uh, Esplanade, Kampongland, Dulu. Uh, Dulu. Uh, at the beginning, they came to Kampongland, then to the Esplanade. Some Bugis people told me they used to hanker in Labuan Johnston. That means uh, the old Johnston Pier before Clifford Pier. But for these people in their village, they say we went to La Bonne Johnston. Then they anchored in Kalang River in 1961. In, uh, uh, 
interesting place in Pasir Panjang from 1970 to 1995. And later on, uh, I don't know anymore if they still come in Lorong Galus. I'm talking about Indonesian boat, either Bugis, Badures, uh, Bawean boat, uh, also many Bugis who are, uh, who are fixed, who stay in the Rio Archipelago, they trade to Singapore, which is very near, and sometimes smuggle, smuggle with uh, Rotan, uh, some products are not authorized, some products are authorized. Long, long time ago, there were the Javanese, who were much uh, well known than the people from Sulawesi. Javanese, they had a huge uh, boat built in tech wood from central Java, and they went to sail in the old. Indian Ocean, all over the Java Sea, Malacca Strait, and bringing rice to Malacca before Singapore. So Javanese have been the first uh, well-known navigator in, uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. Then we came the Bugis, Mandar, Makassar, and the Madures, and then the Bhutanese, and people from Bonerate and the Bajo. It's interesting to, to recall that there are about 155 dialects still in use in Indonesia, but only seven uh, ethnic groups which speak different dialects they built and sell cargo boat. Fishing is a different subject. The cargo boat, so I will mention Javanese, uh, three kinds of boogies, Madures, uh, Bonerate, Bajo. Long, long time ago there were more, but uh, this is not the subject. Uh, I don't know if we talk about the type of boat now, it's a technical story. I think that would be better if you ask, ask me some question about the design of boat, type of boat, type of rig. This ringing is uh, in Indonesia, Layar Tanjak. It's a quadrangular shape with uh, antenna, 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 antenna. This, this is the oldest ringing in Southeast Asia. But this never came to Singapore, they disappeared much before 1819. So if we start with Madura, Madura is very special because uh, the designs, in my opinion, is, comes from the Portuguese. They use Latin cell, which we'll see in the next uh, boat. And they have a Madures boat, some of the Madures boat, they have this uh, shape in the bow, and the, st and the stern and the bow which probably come from Chinese uh, influence. Some of these boats still exist, but they are now motorized. Of course, they have a quarter rudder uh, uh, and no central rudder. This is a Jungulan undersail, but it seems to be very well loaded. Something is not in this uh, right place. 
Okay, anyway. Yeah. Another type of Madurez boat is uh, Golekan. We'll see later. Golekan came to Singapore after the war. Most of the time they brought uh, Bawe, Bawean, 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 Bawean people to immigrate to Singapore. Uh, Madurez boat, they also brought some salt, pigs, uh, cows. Normally they go to Pontianak, but if they, got, if they find some cargo, they continue to Singapore. This is uh, in the uh, 1950s, not after. I never saw Madurez boat in Singapore after the 1980s. The Bugis can use uh, this kind of boat, which is a European rig with a, quart with a central rudder on the stem, and also sometimes yes, sometimes no, a quarter rudder just to help. This Makassar design with the old ringing, which come. which come from a long, long time ago. Uh, we call Padewakan. And it seems to me that this kind of boat came to Singapore and when they saw some uh, boats, especially from Tranganu, with uh, with a modern rig, schooner rig, they adopted the different ringing that we see later. Okay, this is a Gaugolekan from Madura, which is uh, also here. Golekan from Madura with Latin rig with antenna, 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 two, an two antenna. Since the Latin rig authentic is no antenna here. <coughs> this is a modern rigging of the Bugis Makassar. It's possible that they saw this uh, ring in Singapore and they adopted this after the year uh, 1900. After 1900, you couldn't see the old ringing with a quadrangular shape. <coughs> the the Bugis, they also had a, <coughs> a Lambo with a central rudder. Sorry. with a central rudder, no quarter rudder, and a boom which is not fixed. That means the boom is going down with a sail, and this requires a crew. It's very heavy to pull, and it requires a, a crew of uh, 15, 16 people. This rig disappeared in 19... End of 1970s. The island of Bonerate, they were specialized on uh, building this kind of boat. But later, the same, the same hull could have only one mast with a more lighter uh, sail. So we come back with the uh, authentic pinisi. Uh, Sorry, this is wrong. This should be white. Because the triangular cell is like this here. Like it is here. This should be all right. The boom here is fixed. It's not going up and down unless for uh, repair. This is a type of boat who were uh, 
many, many in 1950s in Singapore. They, are, they arrived in August, September, October, and used to live in uh, November, December. There were plenty of shipyards on the Indonesian beaches, especially in South Sulawesi, North Maduro. And that was a fascinating view to, to see how the people they, with almost uh, just one tool, they could build a so huge uh, hull. Sir Panjang. Pasir Panjang was uh, in Clementi, on the West Coast Road, a place along the Pandang River. Which was, which was full of uh, Indonesian boats, motor uh, and sailing. Most of them came from uh, Rio Archipelago, but uh, also from Bhutan and South Sulawesi, but very seldom. The Pandang Harbour was opened from 1970 to 1995. But it was forbidden to go there because uh, there was not uh, perfect about uh, with the boat from, from Rio smuggled uh, Products, if they were caught by the custom, the boat was burnt and the crew put in jail. This is uh, the Cargo they brought this uh, Cayu Bacao, which is from Nire wood, Nire tree, used in Singapore for uh, scaffolding equipment. Here is the uh, Sale of a Bauern boat, the bow of a Bauern boat here, with the antenna of the Latin rig. This is this is from Bhutan. That means uh, it came little by little. Because selling boat in Indonesia, Indonesia can be uh, wandering, buying cargo, selling cargo, buying cargo, or they can be chartered by Chinese. And they can arrive to Singapore in, uh, after a long trip of two or three months. If they find cargo in Pontianak or in uh, Sumatra, they reach Singapore. Some Seldom they come directly to Singapore, like before the war. This is more or less the same. This is a Bugis boat from Rio. There are many Bugis settlements in Rio, like they, have, uh, they had in Johor, in all the Malay Peninsula. Even with with a small boat like this, the button is this button 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 with a central rudder on the stem. This is this is not bogies. This button. 
it seemed they have to repair the I met one of the Putones who, uh, who was an accident with a tanker in uh, <coughs> Singapore Strait. They have had to repair the bow and uh, this part of the boat. But they are very poor, poor people, they have no money. <coughs> Sorry. Laurent, Laurent Galus is uh, the east of Singapore. Northeast. Northeast. Yeah. Near uh, Sungai Serangung. I found some, uh, some boats over there. This astonishing cargo which was uh, stacked in uh, Labuan and Pasir Panjang Harbour. I don't know, it's, it's difficult to say from where. Yeah, I didn't know if I insist on the very important products on board, all kind of, all selling boats, Madura, Bugis, Bajo, especially Bajo, the sea cucumber in Indonesia, this is uh, Tripang. Tripang, uh, Latin name is Oloturi. Olo <coughs> One very important cargo on uh, selling boat. Uh, this is also a very important cargo. They loaded in uh, Dobo on the east. We are now in the uh, water of Pasir Panjang, looking to the south. With a strange kind of boat, who, which came from very near island, they came from Karimun for smuggling and they were, uh, the crew was, were Batak, not Bukis, not Chinese, but they have a Chinese rig. As they could see Singapore at night from the island of Karimun, they didn't have compass and they arrived like this with a it's only 10 meters long, it's a small boat. A Bhutan boat in, uh, in front of uh, Sungai Pandan, Singapore. It seems that they are uh, empty, trying to, they anchor in uh, waiting to enter the harbor, probably with the tide. Sungai Pandan with the Keppel Yard on the background. I think this is a second hand uh, Bugis Pinisi. Very seldom this type of boat arrived in Sungai Pandan in the uh, 1980s. But it looks like in very bad condition. The name of the the name of the boat was Norutama, coming from uh, Sumbawa, but probably staying in Rio or bought by uh, Rio Bugis at this time. This is a Kotak with a Chinese rig with a Batak crew of uh, only three people. Many of these boats were burned by customs because they, if they bring rotin, uh, wild rot rotin not uh, worked, not chair or table, uh, is forbidden.
the charcoal is inside the cabin. This boat is from uh, Bawayan. Called, yeah, the last thing is Bhutanese boat. They had a forbidden cargo like a Paradise Bird. crocodile skin, but they hide in the bottom of the hull of the hold, and they used to take some charcoal or uh, uh, bacaro wood to hide the, for the forbidden cargo. Sorry. Thank you so much. Chinese uh, design, Tanjongru, 1992. This is interesting because it's not a Bugis boat. They are the. I'm not sure they were built in Singapore. You. We could see this boat in uh, 1970, before they disappeared. And they were used to bring wood from Malaysia, timber, timber. They were run by Chinese.